Hello and welcome, my name's Classical101 and welcome to Binge Watchathon. So Daredevil, the first season was an emotionally charged, action-packed thrill ride. And a year after it premiered, the second season came out. And it's... interesting. Let's take a look. Looking at this new season, you really have to start looking at it as two separate plot lines. Daredevil tries to have these stories intertwine at times, but the end result is two very different tales, with some characters crossing over. Plot A is the Punisher story. Frank Castle's family dies, he begins killing criminals, and since Daredevil doesn't like the murder, he catches him. After Daredevil captures him, the Punisher is moved to the B story, dealing with his trial, incarceration, and his journey to becoming the no-holds-barred badass criminal killer that we know the Punisher to be. The Punisher side of Daredevil Season 2 is excellent, and easily on par with everything from Season 1. Hell, in some parts, surpassing it. It's a great story, with the only real issue being that Daredevil kind of takes a back seat in his own show. However, as a Punisher origin story goes, it's fantastic. It has the emotion of him losing his family with all the bloody violence you expect from Mr. Castle. Needless to say, I'm excited for the spin-off. But now let's look at the weaker half of Daredevil Season 2, the Elektra storyline. After putting the Punisher away, Matt Murdock is confronted by Elektra, his ex-girlfriend and a kick-ass martial artist who was working to uncover a mysterious conspiracy. This quickly reveals itself to be the mysterious organization known as The Hand, which ropes in Stick, a blind mentor of Matt's who we briefly saw last season. The Hand is looking for a human weapon known as the Black Sky, which will help them wreak havoc on humanity. So there's an excellent Punisher plotline and an eh Electra story. It's just eh. There's some cool scenes, some emotional moments, some fun things, but the rest of it is just there. Electra was kind of boring for a few episodes before growing a bit more of a personality. Stuck was awesome for his brief appearance last season, and now he gets more to do, so that's a real bonus. As for Matt's development, it's not as present as it was last season, but he still has plenty of great character moments within the Punisher and Electra plotlines. He's not given as much to do, but when he finally does get on screen, it's usually pretty good. The real negative comes from The Hand. They're not the worst villains in the world, they're unique, they offer a challenge, they're a nice change of pace from Daredevil just fighting more gangsters. The issue is, they're not interesting. How the hell did they make ninjas fighting in New York boring? To top it all off, the only Hand member with any name is Nobu. Nobu was a side villain from last season and is now back from the dead. He's pretty much the only one in the hand with any kind of distinct personality, appearance, or name. But his only real thing he has going for him is the fact he did come back from the dead. It makes the conflict feel so much less threatening when the only big bad with a real face is someone Daredevil's already beaten last season. So in summation, two storylines. One's fantastic, one's just air eh, but with some good moments. So the show lives and dies on how well it balances these stories. And... it balances them okay? As I said, the first part of the Punisher storyline is him killing people and then Daredevil catching him. The next handful of episodes is the Punisher's trial and the start of the Elektra plot. Screen time is more or less cut in half, with Matt pulling double duty. During the day, he's the lawyer for the Punisher's trial. At night, however, he's helping Elektra as the Devil of Hell's Kitchen. Then the last few episodes of the season is a 50-50 split, wrapping up both plot lines, except Matt's involvement in the Punisher storyline is minimal. Towards the end, Karen Page from last season is mostly interacting with the Punisher, and Matt is focusing on the final of Elektra's storyline. As I said, this all kind of adds up to... eh. 
The two plot lines never cancel each other out. You always know where you stand in each story and are ready to go back to the other one by the time they cut back to it. It's balanced fine, but the only issue is they never come together like a good story should. There's no connection, no link, no big moment when it all just fits together. It's just two different stories running against each other, one with Daredevil and one with Daredevil's gun-happy friend. It isn't the worst thing in the world, and it's better than if they had tried to connect them and just ruined the climax, but it does pull the series down that the second half is just Daredevil sometimes, and sometimes a Punisher prequel, barely involving Daredevil at all. So, in summation, we have a main character that gets minimal development, two plot lines that never come together, and the weaker of the two plot lines happening to be the one that features the main title character. But we also have a pretty badass Punisher origin story, some great character moments that stand up to the best of last season, and the action is still amazing the second time around. Season 2 of Daredevil isn't perfect. It lags towards the end, Matt doesn't get enough to do for being the title character, but on the road to the Defenders, it's kind of expected that there's a bit more setup. The stories are still fun, there's good characters and great action, so overall, it's still a damn fun time and a really good watch. Not quite as good as Season 1, but still a few points above average. And I'm gonna give Daredevil Season 2 a solid 8 out of 10. What did you guys think of Season 2 of Daredevil? Let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you guys next time on Binge Watchathon. Drop the gun! Drop it! You okay, sir? Yes. Get in your apartment. Lock the door. What about you? I'm good.